how you win in this life, first thing is to know who you are. Who are you, Tolani? Who are you, Blessing? Who are you, Stella? Who are you? If I meet you on the road and say, who are you? What are you going to tell me? Most of you will tell me I'm a lawyer. I'm a caregiver. Most of you look at yourself through the eyes of your occupation. I'm a doctor. When I say, who are you? You tell me I'm a lawyer. And once you define yourself by what you do, you've lost the battle. The battle of life is on identity. This is how you win in life. Who are you? Can you answer that question? Can you truly answer that question? Who are you? How to win in life. The first thing is to know who you are. What's your identity? Now that I pose that question, put a yes or a no. Do you know who you are? Truly now. Don't try and just, just say it because people are listening or watching you know. Do you know your identity? Put Y or put N for no. We're all here to learn. So it's not anything to be ashamed of. For a long time, I didn't know who I was. Do you know who you are? How to win in this life? You must know who you are. Thank you, Miss Wanda. Who are you? Do you know who you are? I didn't say, what do you do? I say, who do you, who are you? And you tell me, oh, I'm, I'm a cook. Do you know who you are? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Happy International Day. God bless you, Mrs. Deepa. Love you dearly too. Thank you for all you do. Blessings. Hallelujah. Do you know your identity? Do you know who God created you to be? Are you comfortable in who you are? Are you someone who is happy to be where you are? Most of us, we're not sure who we are. People tell you, you're too tall. You're too short. You don't have a child. You're not married. Your leg is crooked. You need to do a, a, a what do they call it? Cosmetic surgery. You need to take care of your nose. It's too long. Or your, your hair is too short. And they define you. That's why I said life is very simple, yet complex. When you know who you are, and you sit in the place of your identity, nothing anybody says will face you because most of the time they are wrong. Do you remember the story of a young boy called David? He wasn't king yet. I'm so happy everybody here is saying, yes, yes, I know who I am. Blessings, Daniels, I, I know who I am, yes. I'm a treasured possession. Now, once you know your identity, like David comes out to the place, if you know the story in the Bible, his brother says to him, why did you come here? I know you. You've come to spy or you've come to make trouble again, mischief. Who did you leave the goats with? Who did you leave the ship with? What are you doing here? You don't belong here. And David said, what do you mean? Is there not a cause? He didn't allow big brother to define who he was. His big brother said, you're a troublemaker. David said, no, I'm not. Is there not a cause? When you understand who you are, you will not allow anyone to define you. Especially if that definition doesn't tie with the plan and purposes of God for your life. Life is very simple. Yet complex. So now that we all see that we all know who we are. 
if you're a lion and somebody comes to you and says, you look like a dog, you'll be able to tell them, no, I'm a lion. Sisters, daughters, mothers, grandmothers, whatever time you're watching this, I want you to be very comfortable in who you are. Be comfortable in your skin. Even if you don't look like what people think you should look like. Please be very comfortable in who you are. Second thing I'm going to say. Learn to battle your doubts. Learn to battle your doubts. How to win in life. How many times has God given you an instruction and you overthought the matter, you thought it over, thought it over, and you, you, you rationalized it, and at the end of the day, you said it cannot be done, and you dropped it. Does anybody relate with that? I do. Learn to battle your doubts. Learn to overcome your fears. Life is very simple and yet complex. Every one of us has doubts. Every one of us. Before I came this afternoon, I wasn't ready. I, I was saying to myself, am I sure I want to do this? Because I've been in meetings all day. And then someone said, well, we're expecting you. I said, okay, let's do it. I would have my doubt five minutes, 10 minutes, before this session, but I had to overcome it. Learn to overcome your doubts. Learn to overcome your fears. Many of you are praying from the place of fear. Many of you are praying and fasting because you want to be afraid of something you can't see. How to win in this life? Overcome your doubts. Overcome your fears. Once the doubt is coming in, Send it to be silent. It's a voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Life is very simple. Yet it's complex. The moment you overcome your doubt and you press forward, you see that you're making baby steps and the baby steps are progress. Overcome your doubt. David was given something to wear. Awesome. I love that question. So that's what I'm going to take care of. How do I overcome my fears and my doubts? Awesome. David got to where God was going to display him. His brother told him, you are a mischief maker. He said, no, I'm not. And then the king gave him an, something to wear to go confront Goliath. He said, no, I, I have not tested this, so I'm not going to battle with this. He took off the armor and everything and used what he's used to. Miss Amelia, what have you tested in private is going to help you overcome your fears and doubts? I wanted that to sink in. Every doubt I've had in my life, every fear I've had in my life, I have tested prayer. I have tested the word of God. So I go back to what I know. I'll go back in it. This is how I overcome my own fears and my own doubts. Yours may be different. But something you've tested in private that works for you. Something you've tested when nobody was there. When the doubts come and the fears come, ah, you'll come back to it. Yours may be singing, singing songs unto the Lord. It's what you've tested in private. 
Because you see, fear comes like a giant. Doubt comes like a, di like a giant. How am I going to pay the bill this month? How am I going to overcome this sickness? What have you done before when nobody was watching? That you've tested and you see it works. That's the thing you need to employ again. David said, I cannot walk with this. I have not tested them. So David took it off. Nobody can convince me this word doesn't work. Nobody can convince me that if I lock myself up and I start to pray, I won't see the answers to what I'm looking for. That's how I overcome my fears and my doubts. I take it back to the Lord and tell God plainly, I'm afraid. This thing is making me doubt myself. Before I came here now, I was wondering, am I sure I really want to do this session? But one thing is sure. Once I hand over my thoughts to the Holy Ghost, I hand over my thoughts and I pray, he will speak through me. I won't be the one to speak to you. I've tested it in private so I can use it in public. Let's go to verse, 13, uh, verse 40. David took off those things because he hadn't tested them. What have you tested? Then he took his staff in his hand and then chose five smooth stones. He has tested it before. Miss Amelia, what have you tested before? It will always work. Yours may be praising God. Yours may be just being quiet. When everybody is talking, you're just quiet. You don't say anything. What have you used that calms you down? What have you used? You may have someone who's a mentor that you can talk to that will come and sit with you and look at that scenario and with godly wisdom, help you to overcome that fear, help you to overcome that doubt. It could be your spouse. It could be a sibling. It could be your parents. Who is the person that you've tested in times past and what they told you worked? That is how you overcome your fears. That is how you overcome your doubts. Thank you for that question. Please keep the questions coming. The first thing is to know who you are, not what you do. You know who you are. The second thing is learn to overcome your doubts. Thank you very much for that. We may have different fears, but we have the same way to overcome it. The word and taking it back to the Lord. Lord, I'm afraid. I don't know if I can do this. And then you say, Holy Spirit, help me. And he'll take you through. The third thing I'm going to tell you, because you overcome your fears, is to act on God's instruction immediately. How to win in life. I said life is very simple, yet complex. At times I'll say life is very complex and yet simple. I mix it. Act immediately once you hear from God's spirit. That's how I have been able to overcome so many things. I act immediately, even if it doesn't make sense. How many of you procrastinate here? How many? Just, just show me. You know how to defer something till later. I don't want to put you on the hot seat. But you know you have a master's, a doctorate in overthinking. <laughs> you think and think and think and think. Thank you, Ms. Wanda. You, you, you get an instruction. You get something you know you want to do. And you think, 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 think and rationalize it and bring it down, bring it up, turn it around. Turn it inside out. And then you tell yourself it can't be done. Yes, ma'am. Letting go of perfectionism. It will rob you of a lot of things. Even if you make mistakes. Most of us are afraid of making mistakes. We're afraid of failing. 
And so we want it perfect. And so we rationalize it. Thank you, Miss Prophet Esuchi. We, we rationalize and we think it through and bring it back and then call a friend. And that friend says, no, don't do it. Don't do it. I'll give you a story about myself. <laughs> don't do it. Nobody's done it before. Who's, who, who has done it in our family? Don't go there. No woman can do that. And you think yourself out of destiny. Life is very simple. And yet complex. The complexity comes from you. The simplicity is you've received instruction. Take baby steps. Take baby steps. What did I say? Please put it up there for me. Please take baby steps. Act immediately. Don't postpone it. Don't leave it till later. This is how to win in life. You see the people you see that make progress is because everything they hear, any, anything that comes to them and they feel deep in them, this is the direction. They take baby steps. Those baby steps become large chunks of movement. And then over the years, you see them, they are on top. And you're wondering, oh, but we were friends. She was my classmate. Yes, you were classmates, but they took baby steps. Thank you. Take baby steps in faith, small steps. You will fall down. Have you seen a baby walk before? You will fall. You get up again. There's nothing wrong in falling. It's part of the growth. It's part of the process. Stop being so self-conscious. This is how to win in life. Act immediately. You think they take that step. You get to some point. A baby is crawling. That baby falls and starts to cry. But will that stop the baby from still going? The baby continues to move. Eventually, that baby begins to walk. That baby begins to climb on things. That baby begins to run. It started with the baby steps. Stop condemning yourself for falling. When you make those moves and you trip, it's part of the journey. Take baby steps, saints of God. Take it one step in front of the other. One step in front of the other. Nobody walks the day they were born. Nobody runs at age zero to five months. It's a process. This is how to win in life. So when you fall, and then you focus on that fall. And you talk about that fall all the time. And you feel everybody has watched you that you fell. Who cares about you? I don't care. Because I've just fallen my own. For lack of a better way to express my English. I fall all the time. I don't have time for you. I don't have time to watch you. People who are watching you and making fun of you for falling are not going anywhere. So they're going to lose. Did you hear me? People that are watching you fall and that's their focus and making fun of you have no plan of going anywhere because they're going to be sitting in that place discussing your fall. I don't have your time. I fell. I'll get up again. The Bible tells me that a man, a righteous man, can fall down seven times. He will pick me up again. He picks me up and I keep moving. So in another five years, you see I've gone while you are still talking. This is how to win in life. Take your baby steps. I can't overemphasize this to you. Let go of perfection. Let go. You can't run in one day as a baby. You're going to have to learn to crawl. And then you fall. When you try to grip the table, the stool, you fall. You bump your bum bum. You bump your head. And then you get up again. And you move. And you move. And everybody is looking at you. How long can she go? One day, nobody will hold you to walk again. 
Take baby steps. This is how to win. Don't let anything stop you from moving forward. I have a lot of things to share with you on how to move on in life. But the most important one I'm going to leave with you, you must have self-control. Hmm. You must have self control, how to win in life. That's my fourth point. Like I said, I have a lot to say, but I will keep it at this four so you can go ruminate over it. Go, go, go eat it, digest it, internalize it, apply it. I don't want to load you with too much. How to win in life. It takes discipline. Because you are competing against yourself. That's how you win. Are you a better you from yesterday? It takes discipline. People who are undisciplined, they hang out with the wrong crowd. They say what they want to say whenever they want to say. They don't care. They don't think anybody should tell them, you know, how to live. They are, how do I explain this? They, they, they don't think there's, we can do what we like. We can drink alcohol at 6 a.m. in the morning. Who's going to stop me? It's my money. I can go out and, you know, dress the way I like and do what I like. Nobody's, it's nobody's business. <laughs> but to win in life, you must be self-disciplined. So there are certain things people do that I cannot do. It's not because I can't do those things, but if I do it, does it add to my journey? If it doesn't, then I close it down. My dear sisters, daughters, mothers, grandmothers, no matter what age you are at, learn to start to discipline your tastes, your desires, your crowd, the places where you put your attention. Don't allow things to just go crazy. I don't know the right word to use for you. But I had to discipline myself over and over and over again. And I'm finding myself winning. Some of you know that we meet at 5 a.m. in the morning, my time, 5 a.m. So for me to meet at 5 a.m. in the morning, what time did I wake up? What time did I spend on my own in prayer before I can come before God's people and then lead God's people in prayer? So maybe I've woken up at three. It takes discipline to do that. Maybe. Or do you think I'll just walk in here casually? Satan is looking to, to wipe us out. That these ones that are not serious. You must be a disciplined person. Others may, but you cannot. Please help me write that out. Others may, but you cannot. That means others can do it. Others may get away with it, but you cannot. Others may, but you, you, Tolani, you cannot. Others may, but Tolani, you cannot. You cannot be found in that place. You cannot sleep. You cannot spend all your time looking at TikTok and Twitter. You can't spend all your time doing what everybody is doing. Others may, but I cannot. This is how to win. I'll take questions. 
<laughs> yes, ma. Tolani cannot. I can't. I can't afford that luxury. <laughs> 